Hey, it's an honor to be at Legacy Studios in East Liverpool, Ohio, and she is headed to a function at the beautiful St. Blaise Parish in the heart of Midland, Pennsylvania. She is my longtime friend and many times represented me in various legal aspects of what she does. A great attorney with a big heart who happens to be running for the Beaver County Court of Common Pleas. She is attorney Deborah DeCastro, and she is here right now. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Listen, show her husband over there real quick, Ron. He, of course, 30 years, Heritage Valley Health System, a pharmacist with my cousin Gary Pratt. So it's all in the family, folks, and it's great to have Debbie here. 30 years of uh, really all sorts of great legal experience, family, criminal, estate, civil, municipal law, Penn State graduate, 1986 graduate of Duquesne Law School, does a lot in the community, Penn State Alumni Society. My son, four years, he is attending in his first year at Penn State Beaver and that is a good thing, a Quigley Catholic graduate. And I, by the way, will be doing their gala at the beautiful club at Shadow Lakes. That's coming up on November the 10th. And tickets are still available, by the way. Also, Beaver County Bar Association Board of Governors mock trial coach and Quigley has had a great mock trial team, have they not? Absolutely, they have. Aren't those kids amazing? They are amazing. It's because they work hard. That's right, absolutely. That, because of their mother, folks, my two kids, okay? It's all in the DNA. Now, former business law professor at Geneva College, where I will be tomorrow night talking football with Gino DeMarco, and also Sam DeMarco, the New Brighton Christian Assembly Church, is going to drop by as well, too, Gino's brother. Member of St. Francis Cabrini, Church, absolutely love that parish. Lifelong resident of Beaver County. As I mentioned, her husband Ron, their son Jonathan, a Central Valley graduate, now headed to the Marine Corps. Is he in the Marine Corps now? Uh, he was sworn in. He is to leave on January 2nd for uh, Paris Island. Camp. Yes. How do you feel about that? I'm proud of him. I'm excited and I, I support his decision. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to do two videos here. We're going to do one talking about her life to where she's gotten to this point. Then we'll talk about some of the things that are always on my mind when I'm thinking of all of the hardworking people in the legal system and obviously why she wants to be judge. Looking at your career, it has been a very long career, but you came from a working class family. We talked before your father actually had it at a garage on Franklin Avenue in Aliquippa. Where was it that made you say, I want to actually become an attorney and represent people in a court of law? When did all that happen? Third grade. Oh, come on. Honest. Third grade, Miss Casoli class. It was, she asked us what we wanted to do when we grow up, and that's what I said, and here I am a long time later. A long time later. Listen, one thing I have seen, and by the way, the direct mailer, thanks to the United States Postal Service, got a beautiful picture postcard with all of this stuff that I just read, so it actually did my work for me, so I really appreciate that. But you guys are really out amongst the people. I admire you for doing that. And by the way, it's DeCastro4, the letter, not rather, number four for judge on Facebook, and we're gonna actually link into that. You got a great group of supporters behind you. I don't think I've ever seen anybody, and I've been around politics a long time, that has been out amongst the people so much, and especially when you have a successful practice as you do because of your reputation, your trust, your passion as far as your clients. How have you been able to make all this work? Well, I have a great secretary. I have a wonderful family who's very supportive, and I think it's important for me to be out there and meet as many people as I can. So you're headed to Midland today, so I, to love that. I love that community. Tell me about what people are saying to you and what you've met and obviously a diverse group of people, and that's gonna kind of tie into our next video. Tell me about the people you've run into. I've met people of all walks of life asking me, you know, why I'm doing this, what can I do to help them, what are we gonna do about the opioid addiction, um, just different questions like that. People have been very supportive. I've represented a lot of people. I've always tried to be pleasant, not only to the people I represent, but to other people. Uh, and I think I've been respected for that, and I appreciate that. I've run into some people that I have not represented who said I, they were on the other side and are great. They think it's great that I'm doing this. You know what has always amazed me about you, and that's why I believe, this is my opinion, you're going to make a great judge. And by the way, November 7th, I highly urge you to all get out and vote because it's important, especially these type of campaigns, when you have people running for judges and other offices, the grassroots, it's so important, just as important as anything at the state level and the national level, because these people can actually help. But what I've always admired about you, I've never seen you get flustered. You always look at it with empathy on both sides of the bench, if you will. You respect the people that are sitting on the bench. You respect the people that you're actually, you know, representing, as opposed to, you know, whoever you're going up against in a court of law, the opposition's attorney. How has someone, and I've been around you for, 20 plus years, how has someone been able to maintain such a 
calm and composed attitude in what can be a very volatile situation, especially in divorce court. Do you think religion has something to do with that? I think it does. I think that uh, religion has taught me to be calm, believe in God. I try to have the right heart and just wonder where people are coming from, and I try to help them. You know, you have faced so much adversity at times in your life, and we're not going to go down that road. But you've been such a source of inspiration to me from afar because you kept me calm when my life was crumbling, okay? And when your life was crumbling and I was crumbling because of it, you were there to kind of lift me up and it was you going through these issues. So I actually think when you look at what a judge is supposed to do, you've been kind of training for this your whole life. I believe so. I believe I have a path in life and I hope this is it. When you look at the working class people of Beaver County, and we're going to talk <clears throat> coming up next uh, segment from, I've said, middle class to working class to the working poor. There are so many people out there that are working just to have health care, just to maintain, taking jobs that they otherwise would probably never take. People who've graduated from great colleges, academic institutions from around the country who are working in other jobs that they don't even have a degree in, right. and they can't make ends meet. So they're dealing with so many issues. So when you, hopefully, and I believe you will be sitting on that bench, Beaver County Court of Common Pleas, that I have such respect for, do you see all of that? Or do you think tunnel vision to where you can't see that? But I mean, how can you not see it? I think you have to see it. And I think practicing family law has made me see it even more. I see people at their worst. They've lost everything. They're fighting about everything. Money is, is so little. Uh, the opioid addiction, it's just it's tearing families apart. We're going to talk more about that in the next segment because that is a major problem, not just here in East Liverpool and in Columbiana County, but in Beaver County and all throughout the area. Our Governor Tom Wolf in Pennsylvania has talked about it quite a bit. I've talked to the district attorney in Beaver County about it. And the amazing thing that he told me, everybody thinks it's someone from the wrong side of the track, but it's really the young football player who tweaks his shoulder and gets addicted. It's the 60-year-old who has just retired, gets a hip replacement. They get addicted to pain medicine. But you see all of these great brands trying to really make a difference. You know, CVS now is limited to like a seven-day, you know, prescription. You have doctors getting involved. You have drug companies spending a whole lot of money, healthcare officials. But I will say this, it all comes down to individual responsibility. And if you're the one taking them and you end up on the wrong side of that prescription, you can't blame anyone else. You have to accept the responsibility and get help. But the good news is, as we go to break and come back with our second video, there is good help out there. People like Gateway and others who are really turning people's lives around. I think you're correct, and I think it affects every one of us. Every family, it affects somewhere down the line. The great Debbie DeCostro running for Beaver County Court of Common Pleas. One more video here at Legacy Studios in East Liverpool with Jimmy Joe Savage. We're going to come back and talk about crimes that are being committed, and a lot of them because of the opioid addiction, broken homes, and family values. And the most important thing with any judge, crime and punishment. That's next. Stay with us. Good afternoon.